Lord, we thank You for this day. And Lord, I thank You for the graduates that were up here and all the graduates that are continuing their journeys and deciding where life is going to take them. Lord, let them know that You are with them and that You hold them in the palm of Your hand. Be with them as they try to decide what to do with their lives and the paths to take. And let them know that people will be thinking and praying for them. Lord, we lift up our own lives this morning as well and just ask that wherever we may need You, that You can be God and bless us this morning. So we thank You. And all of God's people said, I'm going to warn you this morning that I'm going to repeat myself today, but that's intentional. Because as we talk about uh, the next chapter in the Messy Spirituality book, I also want to tie it into a message to the graduates and, and to all of us in general. And you're going to hear me say a couple things over and over again because I think that God um, needs us to be reminded of that sometimes. But as, we were, as I was thinking about this chapter, and this chapter in, in the book of Messy Spirituality today talks about getting us to understand that we do not need to compare ourselves to other people. That we all are unique and that we all have a purpose and that it doesn't matter what other people are doing, we need to be ourselves. And, you know, it, it's hard sometimes because we see other people doing big things with their faith or at least we think they're doing big things with their faith. And when we see people on the news or, or um, on the television and you think of people like Billy Graham or Mother Teresa or any of these other things that you say, wow, I can never be like that person. They are so spiritual. They do such great things in the name of God. And here I am, just this little person that doesn't really amount to much. Much. And, and it's a very detrimental thing to our faith. No matter who we are, at some point, we have compared ourselves in such a way that has made us feel a little less than. Or a little like, you know what, I'm about to give up because I can't do this, so what is the point? And I was thinking of one person in particular in the, in the story, in, in the biblical story, and that is Mary. Now, usually you talk about Mary um, at Christmas time. Okay, oh, she's the mother of Christ, and we know the story and all of that. But there's something about Mary that I always had to ask myself what was it about her that God liked? What was it about Mary that God said she is going to be the one who brings in the Savior of the world, or however you want to word that? So I started asking myself those questions. And of course, we look at Mary and we say, wow, she did did something so great. I mean, if you are from a Catholic church, Mary is up there with the Trinity for how powerful Mary was and how important Mary was for what she did. And we think we would never be able to do that if God came and called us and said, you know what, I want you to bear the Son of God or whatever God decided to, to share with you. And we say, no way, I'm not up to that. And we think Mary was up to that because she was this big spiritual giant, which really... We have no idea if that was the case. We don't really know much about Mary. We know a little bit about the story of her life, but not much. Just that she was this young girl, this young country girl that could loosely trace her um, roots back to David if you follow some of the lineage in the Bible. But we don't know much about her. She wasn't this great, well-known person. She wasn't this spiritual giant. She wasn't somebody that all these people looked up to. So if that wasn't the case, what did God see in her. And for me, I think what it was, was that Mary was just an ordinary person. Just a person who felt called and was told by God that she had a plan and, and all of this. And Mary was obedient and said, I don't know how in the world this is going to happen. I don't think I'm up to it. And all of these other people should have been um, picked before me, but I am going to be faithful and I'm going to do this. So there's this idea that maybe it was because of the ordinariness of what Mary was is why God used her. Now, I want you to think about that 
for a moment because, again, God did not come for the powerful people. God did not come for the people who thought they had it all figured out. God did not come for the people who were well-known and had all of these stations in life. God came for the ordinary people. God came for the marginalized and the oppressed. God came to let us know that even though we may not think of ourselves highly as some other people, that we are just as much worth that to God than the Billy Grahams and the Mother Teresas and the Marys in, in the life of faith. That we are worth just as much. So we discredit ourselves a lot from the faith. We talk about messy spirituality. And part of what that means is that uh, my life is a mess sometimes and I don't know how God can bring order from it and I don't know how God can deal with this because it is all a mess and God shows up and says, I don't really care about the mess. I'm calling you. I have a job for you to do. I want you to know that you are worth just as much to me as anybody else you can compare yourself to. You are loved and you are worth it. You are worth it, God says. That's a big thing to get in our head, to know that we are worth something. You know, our world, sometimes our families, sometimes our friends, um, things around us, they always want to tell us that we're not worth something or that we fall short or they make us feel inadequate. And then here comes God and says, you are worth so much more. Here comes God that says, get up. I am going to call you in spite of who you think you are, in spite of the messes that you had. You are worth it to me. We are like Mary. Ordinary people that can do extraordinary things if we just allow God to work in our lives. You know, and one day, you know, we're minding our own business and we're going about life and all of a sudden God shows up and it changes things. And God says, here I am and I need you and you are worth something and I want you. What are you going to do with this? Yes, everything is a mess at this point. But I'm here now and I'm letting you know that you are worth it and you are loved so you can start to clean up this mess. You know, this idea of keeping everything messy up here was to illustrate a point that our lives are a mess. But it wasn't to illustrate a point that we leave our lives a mess. Part of our spiritual journey is to say, okay, it starts right here in the messiness of my life. But because God thinks I am worth it and because I know I am called to something, I can start to clean up some of these messes. Or at least I can clean up this mess until another mess happens. Either way, God says, I will be with you and you are worth it and you are loved. Somebody count how many times I tell you you are worth it this morning. You are worth it, God says. We are called and we are called to serve and to make a difference in this life. Not only in our own lives and the family around us, but we are called to be examples to let other people know that God thinks that they are worth it just as much. That God loves them just as much as we are loved. And God is calling them just as much as we are being called. And God does not want somebody else. That's the amazing part. If God wanted the Billy Grahams and the Mother Teresas and all of these spiritual giants that you can think of, God will call them. But God knows who we are. And God is going to call us because God needs us. We all are unique. We all have talents and gifts that only we can provide. So God says, I am calling you, John, or I am calling you so-and-so because I need you. And I'm thinking of the graduates this morning that you guys are called, wherever you're sitting, okay? You are called to go and change the world. God is relying on you. And the only way you can change the world, any of us can, is to first realize that God has some faith in us and that we are worth it. And now I don't know what that calling may be, but God says we need you and you have a job to do. So I want to read to you out of the book of Galatians. And it'll be up here starting with the 22nd verse of the fifth chapter. And it says this, But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, and serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness per permeates things and people. 
We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for good, crucified. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure that we do not just hold on an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts, but work out its implications in every detail of our lives. That means we will not compare ourselves to each other as if one of us were better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. That means we will not compare ourselves with each other as if one of us were better or another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. I love that verse. God says, listen, people. Listen, John. You wanted to feed yourself all of the time, but you have devoted your life to this spiritual life, and you can do something amazing. The graduates that don't know really what they're going to do. I have an idea, and I have a major, and things change, and I think this is the plan for my life. God is calling you. It's up to us to wrestle with that and understand, okay, what is God calling us to do? All of us in here have a calling. I have no idea what that is. You wrestle with that. You figure that out. But part of that calling is to realize and say, you know what? I'm worth this calling. I can do this calling. And the reason I know I'm worth this calling and that I can do this is because God thinks I can or God knows I can. God says that you are worth it. You need to do this. It's up to us. God, and this is a humbling idea too, God relies on us. God relies on us to bring the kingdom of God about. God relies on us to show people love and grace and mercy and all of these things that are part of our life of faith. God, most of all, uses us and relies on us so that we can go and sit with people when they don't feel much worth anything. And we can say, you know what? God thinks you are. You know what? You can walk with me on this journey. Or whatever it may be, we have these jobs to do. God meets us in the messes of our lives, but then just doesn't leave us there. God walks and talks with us and helps us to get that strength to say, okay, I can do this. God sees something in each of us. We may think it's ordinary. We may think that, oh, this doesn't matter. God thinks it's extraordinary. Now, some people might think, or even the quilters might think, well, I'm just making these quilts. It doesn't really matter. It matters. To know that somebody is thinking of somebody enough to say, here, remember us, and we put some time and to love into this. Or you may not think anything about bringing a meal to somebody that is sick. Or you may not think that it is a big thing to put a card in the mail just to let somebody know you're thinking of them or to show up and help somebody with something. We think all of these little things are so little that they don't amount to anything, but it is in those little things that spirituality happens. It's in those little things that God shows shows who God is to other people. We may think they are little and insignificant, but God says they are very significant and we need them. And only you can do it. Only you can reach somebody the way you do. We are part of a body. We are part of a body and all of us have a role to play. And does anybody know what Paul says happens when one part of the body is sick? That's right. The rest of it is sick. You can't function. If one part is sick, people try to overcompensate or fill it up, but we're all needed. And we can't accomplish what we are called to do unless we are all working together with our individual talents and callings and all of us realize that we are what? Everybody should have said that. We are what? That's right. And we need to tell other people they are worth it as well. Again, God didn't come to compare us. 
God didn't come to say, okay, John, I'm going to hold you to the standard of so-and-so or, hey, you're, you know, you're below the bar. God didn't come for that reason at all. God came to walk with us, to help us form into the women and the men that God is calling for us to be and to know that we can do it. And again, I don't know what everybody's calling is. Some of us spend a long time figuring out our calling, but that's our job. Part of our reason for being a people of faith is for us to say, okay, God, what do you want from me? Okay, God, I may not think I'm much, but obviously you want me for a reason. Help me to figure that out. Whether it is something big, little, or in between, we are called to wrestle with that. We are called to say, okay, God, I know you think I am worth it. Help me to realize that. We are all called to something. And again, to the graduates, you will figure this out. And in college, you are going to do a lot of things. And one of the things I hope that you do is to hold on to this faith that says, okay, I need to figure out where God is leading me. I need to figure out what God is calling me to do so that I can help build this kingdom of God that God is calling. And how we do that is by paying attention to God around us. Paying attention to all of the ways God is trying to get our attention and say, okay, here I am. Let's do this. And that's a reminder to all of us, whether we are graduating or whether we are nearing 90 or above, God says, let's figure out what you can do to help build the kingdom of God. And maybe that's another reason that Mary was a good example because Mary was obedient and Mary maybe didn't figure out how this was going to work and she was afraid and Joseph was afraid and all of this but Mary still said you know what God's calling me I have to go we have to do this and God will give us the strength to do this and in closing this world compares us enough our society tells us that we have to have certain things to be viable members of society. Our neighbors compare us. Other people compare us. Family members compare us. We compare ourselves to other people enough. God does not. And if you ever hear somebody try to say that God does compare you to somebody else, it's not the truth. God does not compare you to anybody else because there is nobody else like you. We are originals. We are worth something to God and it is because of who we are. And one of my biggest things in my own theology and what I say to a lot of people is that God does not want to change who I am. Yes, there are things in my life that I need to get right. And there are things in my life that I need to tweak a little bit. But God is not going to change my personality. God is not going to change the way I interact with people. God is not going to change who I fundamentally am because that is who God wants. Whether or not it is what you want. <laughs> okay? Because like I've said before, some of us, we can minister to some people extremely well and to other people not at all. That is a thing we have to accept. But I have to accept the fact that if there are some people that I can't minister to, there's other people in here that can minister to them. There's other people in here that God can use, and that's how we work as a body. And all of us are unique and original, and God says, I cannot have a body that is healthy without you in it. That is what our spirituality leads us to do. So that we can give thanks you know, we're going to sing give thanks with a joyful heart. And one of the things we can give thanks for is that we are called and that God does love us and that God does tell us that we are worth it. And we can give thanks to God no matter what is in our life because we have those moments where God touches us. And when those moments come and we feel those spiritual impacts of that moment, we can share that with other people and then they can experience God as well. Just like the children's story. I guarantee you there had to be some people in here that do not feel like laughing this morning. But you can't help it sometimes. When the Spirit comes, or when God shows up, or when something in life just says, you know what, that made me smile. And in those moments, we get respites from what we are worried about. And in those moments, we can breathe a little bit of what we talked about last week. We slow down enough to say, you know what, 
it's going to be okay. And it's going to be okay because God is with me. And it's going to be okay because God needs me and wants me so we can do this together. Again, I have no idea what some of you are called to. Some of you are using your talents. Some of you are still trying to figure that out. That is our job. We work and we wrestle and we figure out where we fit in. That's how we grow spiritually. That is how we grow in a lot of different areas. But it starts with knowing that you are what? And God calls all of us. So let us pray. Lord, help us to remember that. Such a simple concept when we say it, but very hard to believe it. So help us to know that we are called. And we are called because of who we are. So help us to figure that out. Help us to listen for Your voice. Whether we are now just moving on to the next phase or whether we have been here for many, many years years help us to know that all of us have a part to play and it all is because you call us and you tell us that we are worth it and we are loved so help us to know that in our spirits and in our heart and then be able to share that with other people so that they can come along and we can journey together knowing that god says we are all worth it and all of god's people said So as we leave this place, may we go and may we feel God's presence in our life telling us who we are and what we are worth. And just allow me to read these verses one more time as we close. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure that we do not just hold it as an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts but that we work out its implication in every detail of our lives. That means we will not compare ourselves with each other as if one were better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. So as we leave this place, may we know that. And all of God's people said, Amen.